the year 2005 was very important for Rockford Fosgate. It was their 25th year anniversary. This year they offered no less than 12 different punch amplifier models, 10 different power series amplifier models, in addition to four different 25 to life models, including the punch 45, 75, 150, and of course the power 1000. Make sure you check the video description for the link of the tests I've done on these particular amps. But today we're going to look at the smallest one in the power series from 2005, the T3002. Here you can see me unboxing one for the first time. It's brand new. See the base knob there? There's some of the hardware. The manual that came with it is here. We'll get to the ratings here in a few minutes. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And you can also see it came with a birth sheet, all that good stuff. Again, we'll get to that further in the video. But yeah, we actually had to peel the cellophane off the amp. Brand new from 2005. It's pretty amazing, actually. So when the amp retailed for $449 and was available from 2005 to 2006. And you can see from the exterior, really you just see the logo. And then you see the power, thermal, and protect LEDs. That's really all you see. So you have to take off two of the Phillips head screws here to get to all the connections. Let's take a better look at what connections we have here. And everything is on one side, which is kind of nice. Makes it nice and easy to hook up your peripherals. So we have the speaker connections. This is a two-channel amplifier. So we have left and right, and you can also bridge it. We have the remote base connection. Also the gain potentiometer, a crossover frequency adjustment, and a switch for low pass, bypass, or high pass for the crossover. And then we have RCA inputs and pass-through for each of the two channels, which is very useful. Then we have four gauge for the power and ground. We have a remote connection and two 40 amp ATC style fuses. Get your fuse on, this ain't team no fuse. This is team got a fuse. Now later in the video, we're gonna look at the internals, but right now I'm just teasing you. As far as dimensions, 13.6 inches wide, 12.8 inches tall, and then 2.3 inches on the height. Again, this is a two-channel amplifier rated 50 watts by two at four ohms, 100 watts by two at two ohms, 150 by two at one ohm, or you could bridge it at four ohms for 200 by one or 300 by one at two ohms bridged. And yeah, all those ratings are a joke, which you're going to find out here in the near future. But first off, before we fire up the dyno, make sure you check out the video description and pick you up some Wilson Audio merch, some cool hoodies, all that fun stuff. Make sure you give me a thumbs up as well. Now we're going to try first the stereo modes on the amplifier. It's rated 50 by 2 at 4 ohms. Here we go. Certified test up to 1% THD. Check this out. Unbelievable. 200 <laughs> plus watts certified. It's rated 50 by 2. It did 200 by 2. Unbelievable. 66% efficiency. Now instead of showing all the tests, we decided to jump over to the 2 ohm stereo test. And let's see what it does. Two ohm stereo rated 100 watts by two. Again, 100 by two. And it is 308 watts by two. Unbelievable. Efficiency 55%. This is a class AB amplifier, so do not expect high efficiency. Now let's try one ohm. Both channels measured, both channels loaded. It's rated 150 watts by two. Look at this. Right at 400 watts by two. <sighs> Geez, what's going on, Rockford? We actually asked them later on, and you'll see why they made this amplifier so underrated. Because I was just like, it doesn't make sense. 430 and 454 at clipping, where it's rated 150 watts by two. Just mind-blowingly different power here. I've never seen an amp other than, well, I have seen some, but it's very rare to see them like this. 541 and 548. Oh, wow. 47% efficient, though, at 1 ohm. Again, you kind of expect that with Class AB amps. Next up, we'll bridge the amplifier and try 4 ohms first, rated 200 watts at 14.4 volts. I bet it's going to do more than that. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. 595 watts at 14.34, rated 200. Wow. Okay, uncertified. I bet it's gonna get a little bit more than that 594. And yep, 666 and not today, devil. Let's switch it over to the dynamic test. 
send a pulse tone. All these tests I'm showing are at 40 hertz. We didn't do the one kilohertz test. We did the 40 hertz test. We're showing you what it's like here. 742 watts, 4 ohms, 14.4. 59% efficient, again, class AB, we kind of expect lower efficiency. Now this amp will also do two ohms mono, it's rated 300 watts. Let's see what we get. Yeah, 813 watts, 14.48 at 1% THD. Next up, we'll try uncertified test, which takes us up to the clipping point. And here we go, almost 900 watts, 891 right at 14.4 volts. Next up, we'll shoot the dynamic bursts and a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amplifier. See if we can break 1KW. Oh yes, 1,007 watts, 14.52. Efficiency 48.5% at two ohms mono. Now we'll show the results. We showed you most of the tests, but there were a few of the uncertified and dynamic tests we didn't show you. You're welcome to pause if you wanna see all the tests. We did 15 different tests plus a few extras. So we ran this amp pretty hard. So next up, I know the question everybody's asking, and I asked the same thing. Dear Rockford guys, why the heck was this amp so underrated? I don't get it. Rated 50 by two does 200 by two at four ohms. And Eric Russell, who's a longtime Rockford employee, gives a great explanation as to why. Basically, it was <laughs> between marketing and engineering, they wanted to make it a little bit better, and it turned out being a lot better. So that's all there is to it. You can pause it and read all this if you want to, but that's basically what it says. So the burst sheet that I got with the amplifier that I opened shows 222 watts at 4 ohms, 680 total at 2 ohms, and 891 at 1 ohm. That's not the actual amp I tested because I had a used version I got from my buddy Scott. So do it bump dough. Let's find out. All right, let's try a little woofer test with the Rockford 3002. We have the Gately Audio sub box, Lord of Bass, Hammer McCammer design subwoofer. Let's try it out. Let's take a deeper dive into the internals of this T3002. And Rockford had a really good, really cool picture here showing the way the different components come off of the amplifier. And we're going to take a closer look here, see what happens. Take the two screws off the front here to take the panel off. You have to take two screws off the top. You don't have to take the ones off of the front like I did, but you do have to pop out this little plastic panel that goes around where the RCAs are, and then you can pop off the, the top cover. And then you can see the good, nice, clean internals of the Rockford T3002. Now we're going to take a closer look here in a minute, but you can see here at the bottom, that's Tony Demore. Yeah, he's one of the ones that helped design this amplifier. That's really cool. Has 4,700 microfarad, 50 volts for the rails, 
It has 330 microfarad, 63 volts for the input filtering. And it uses the TO247 MOSFETs, which are 60% larger than the TO220s that many amps use at this time. Also, the FQA 28N15 is the actual model number of those, and there's eight of them in the amp. I'm going to kind of show you a breakdown of the different components of the amp. You can see the output section here on the left, the power supply section on the right, and then, of course, you have the input section, which is kind of on the front, and there's also some crossover controls and the base control and stuff like that. So this is a class AB amplifier, not a class D, so it's a little different. So the other thing that's really cool is using the thermal camera, the FLIR. And I got the amp heated up by playing some music and stuff, got it nice and toasty. And 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit is the warmest that I measured here on the inside of the amp. But it's really cool to see the areas of the amp which get the hottest. I think this is really slick. Now we'll talk about the good stuff. Insane power output, no doubt. Rockford reliability, goes without saying. Class AB sound. Has a cool parametric bass remote like that. All connections are on one side, which makes it very easy to install. And it supports 1 ohm stereo, 2 ohms mono, and also tri-mode operation if you want to go that route. Things that could be better, of course, the class AB efficiency is going to be low compared to class D. Very large size because it has to dissipate a lot of heat. Has a removable cover that some people tend to lose. 12 dB per octave crossover instead of 24 dB on this model. And is it maybe too underrated? I don't know. What do you think? Well, guys, I had fun testing this. Rockford's most underrated amplifier by percentage ever. The Power Series T3002. What a beast. Rated 50 watts by 2. Does 200 by 2. Super cool. Thanks, as always, for watching. Special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tom Cat, Scott, Brad, Big D, I'm out of here! Alright, a little extra feature for you here, the Rockford Power T5001BD. This is from the year 2006 or 2007. Two ohms is rated 400 watts by one. This amp has three 40 amp fuses. So we'll be interested to see what we get here at 2 ohms. And yes, check this out. 741 watts, 14.46. Again, crazy underrated on these specific year lines from Rockford. Dynamic bursts in a 40 hertz tone. Look at this, 765 watts. Very cool.